Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh, thanks for joining me. Today we're talking about a brand new creator. She's been on my hit list for a little while. It's Wheelchair Rapunzel. And I've been just keeping like a cursory glance, eye on her about what's been going on with this. Like she's obviously a child exploiter, but there's so much more to this. And this world of like influencer culture that is just, it's just gross. And the people who will take advantage of it and all refuse to get real jobs because they just want to take advantage of, of, of subscribers and you know, clickbait and their children. And it's nasty. And this is just, this is, there's a massive wormhole and I'm just scraping the surface today. I'm doing my first video on a video that she's talking about people calling DCFS on her. And we're gonna see why she's such a problematic career. So let's take a look at it. So if you're new to this channel, you know that I cover people who, ch who ch exploit children. You also know that I hate influencer culture and I just, this one kind of converges on all of that. Wheelchair Rapunzel is a creator um, and I have a snark thread that I started because this snark thread uh, on on here that they spelt Rapunzel wrong, uh, they're gatekeeping. So there's a bunch of there's a bunch of Reddit threads on Reddit about Wheelchair Rapunzel. I've started one. You can click in the thing below and you can take you right to the to that Reddit thread. Um, there's a lot of people on Reddit that gatekeep Reddit mods. If you don't know anything about Reddit mods, they're kind of like, right? They're just, it's crazy. They never had any real power in their life. And when they finally get on a, a thread, they, it's really weird because eight passengers mods do the same thing. It's just really weird how mods will gatekeep things. They're like, we don't want to give you information. Basically that's public on their page. So I was like, okay, I'll just start my own wheelchair Rapunzel page. Anyway, um, head over to my wheelchair Rapunzel page, get on there and start, to, and we'll start, I'm going to start uncovering a lot about this because I'm only scratching the surface like literally scratching the surface. I know nothing about her, but that's how I do it on this channel. I blind react and I learn over time. We continue to do videos and as big ones pop up, I do those videos and I learn as I watch them. I'm not gonna go down and watch every piece of her content. That would take me literally months. Okay, I'm um, out here doing this video on Rapunzel and if someone is out there who knows everything about wheelchair Rapunzel, you can ignore the mods on this Reddit page. You can come talk to me, I promise. They're not gonna get mad at you for talking to me. So um, it's how I do my research. I often will pay people to help me do research. So if you know everything about the wheelchair Rapunzel timeline, come let me know, I'm happy to pay for your time. So basically where it all started was, if you go to the TikTok gossip, there's one in the TikTok gossip. This is kind of where it all started. People got really pissed at her for doing this this one thing right here. And so this is where it all kind of started. So let's take a look at this. Two open stalls. So I'm not sure if I'm hearing this correct, if I'm reading this correct, but she's setting up a tripod or someone's in there filming with her. She has a credit card in her boob or something. Anyway, see, um, that's, I forgot to mention. She has an OnlyFans too. She does disabled pornography. Okay, so, and has a child on the internet. And you know how I feel about that. Anybody who does OnlyFans, if you're a consenting adult and you want to do OnlyFans, you want to do pornography, go for it. Soon as you have children and you bring children to this world and you are a public sex worker, you should not do it anymore because your kid is going to suffer the consequences of your selfish actions, okay? And I say it's selfish because when you, when you have children and they have to grow up in a world where anybody can just look at their mom and see their butthole on the internet, then you're doing them a disservice. If you're planning on not having kids and you're just a consenting adult, I don't really think there's anything, I honestly, go for it. Do what you gotta do. I would never want that for my kid, but I'm just saying, do what you gotta do. But these people who do porn because they have no other options in life, that's what they're telling people, that this is what you should do because you have nothing else. Anyway, all that to say, um, she does porn and uh, she's literally filming in a bathroom, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> Still waiting. Okay, so no, this camera isn't set up a tripod. There is a person holding this camera. Who is holding a camera in a woman's bathroom? Larger stars are not made for abled luxury. They're for disabled people. Like, ignore the fact that, okay, you can use whatever bathroom you want, okay? They, they're they there. So if if two people walk into a bathroom, one of them is in a wheelchair, ha, you can have this one. But if there's nobody in that bathroom, I'm going to use whatever stall I want. It's not just for people who have who are, who are disabled. And how do you know that woman isn't disabled to some degree? That's very ableist of you, right? So not only are you filming in a bathroom, not asking her permission, 
You're literally lying to people. You don't just, if the bathrooms are all full and that one's the only one available, you, let me just give you permission. Go ahead and you go ahead and use it. You don't need a wheelchair card to go use the bathroom. And so she's gross for doing that. And some of the comments were like, she's such a bitch. It's a bigger potty for your wheelchair. That's all it means. You weren't in there at the time. So she went in. It'll be okay. Yeah. Like just wait like the rest of people, like just because you're disabled doesn't, you can't wait. This is a good, this is a good point. I'm disabled and this pisses me off to no end. Yes, the cells were open at that very moment, but it doesn't mean they were five minutes prior, but some people also have issues with claustrophobia and tight spaces. I don't care that someone uses larger stall. I get it. No one wants to be in a tiny little box trying to pee. I also don't blame parents who have small children for using larger stall, which is what I do. It's difficult to try to pee when you got two little ones staring at you trying to pee under the, peek under the next stall. They are invisible illnesses. The irony of someone uh, disabled spewing ableism. Wait, is disabledism a thing? I guess so. So what's happening here is wheelchair Rapunzel is using her disability for clout, right? It's just like every, it's, it's this world we live in right now that the more, the more of a victim you are, the more victim points you can score on social media. And a lot of people make money in the grift. Okay, so she's using this to be like, this is my life. And I don't I don't even have a problem with someone saying, this is how I navigate life as a disabled person. No problem with that at all. Probably some really great info and tips inside that you can do, but this woman will stop at nothing to gain clout, including doing pornography, including exploit her child on the internet, including go through really, really dangerous relationships. And from what I'm reading so far, really disgusting people she's bringing into her life with her child. She moves around a lot, she goes clubbing a lot. Apparently she does drugs and drinks a lot. All while having a child, while being disabled, which is already difficult enough, I can imagine. Okay, and she's got a massive online group of haters. 28,000 people in one thread. TikTok gossip, there's thousands of people commenting. Her, her comments on YouTube and TikTok are all pretty negative because what she does is she puts out negative energy in the world and she just expects people to bow down to her because she has a disability. That's what we've created as well. That's not even her fault. Like, let's be real. That is the world we have created. That is the world social media has created. The more of a victim you are, the more victimhood points you can score, the better off you are. That has got to change. Oh, have you seen the Snapchat series about disabled people going on blind dates? She was on it and her personality is literally so shitty and entitled. She bitched at the guy because he was a little bit late and just had an awful attitude the entire time. I do not like her. So she's got a lot of haters. Okay, that's for sure. But what drew me to this is I've had this video in my docket for a little while. It was this video and it says... Tell all how TikTok trolls sent CPS to take my baby. Now, I, again, I don't know a lot about her. Probably birthed her child on the internet, right? Is definitely exploiting her child for clout on the internet, which you know I hate. It's absolute garbage and monster. And she does porn on the internet. Now, again, this woman will stop at nothing to get clout and gain fame and tries the every route every single avenue every single one and if, when you do that when you become that type of person when you were you're not genuine you're disingenuous you will fall you will gather a large following of hate that's what it is because nobody believes you and the real person you are if this is actually what we see on your front page what you're showing us imagine what we don't see and that's the craziest part about wheelchair rapunzel so let's take a look at what she has to say here this tell all video this video has been a long time in the making. For those of you that don't know me, I have a physical disability. I am a new mom, and I have a seven-month-old, absolutely beautiful baby, and a lot of drama has happened. So yeah, you caused the drama. Since the birth, awful things that have been really hard at times to process and navigate and... Did you have to stand out by a fountain to do this? Did you have to? Um, one of the things that happened was that I had Child Protective Services called on me um, and investigate my ability to properly be a guardian of my daughter. There was a lot of misconceptions about... When a creator says misconceptions are like, it was like misinformation, it's, it's usually not. It's usually not. They just like, well, it's out of context. I was at the club or whatever, and I left my kid at home. It's out of context. There's no, there's context missing. What happened, how those calls were made, who made the calls. Was it a mandatory reporter? Was it a doctor? Was it a family member? Was it a friend? Was it someone who knew me personally? And I'm here to finally answer 
a lot of this question. So, uh, so she's she monetizes this, right? It's it's nothing short of any other family vlogger, right? Whenever there's something big like fathering autism will do this to you, he'll monetize these videos. You get so upset in his videos, you guys called CPS on me. But they'll use it. Like they're looking for content in every avenue possible. So no matter what happens, good, bad, or the ugly, they're gonna show it to you because they can make money on it. So they like when you guys do this stuff. They like it. This drums up freaking outrage. I'm just gonna take you guys back to the very beginning of kind of this whole story because it's pretty long, so bear with me. Ari was in the NICU for about 30 days, I wanna say roughly. Um, I had her at 34 weeks and her delivery went up without a hitch. I was fine, my recovery was going good. She was doing amazing in the NICU, um, but in the meantime, I was getting a ton of hate on social media and it was very hard for my family. And I but why? Why are you getting a ton of hate? Explain why. And if they say there's no reason for me to getting a ton of hate, that's not true. There's got to be something that triggered a lot of people to, 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 to do this, to, to, to send you that much hate. It doesn't just happen willy nilly. What did you do? I just to see these constant. Are they saying that she's irresponsible having a child because she's disabled? She terminal? Hate comments every single day. Um, just about me, um, Noah, her dad, and um, me being able to parent her. And this is just awful things. The day after I brought her home from the NICU, I got a call from someone and I had no idea who it was. It put me through to this man. And he was like, oh yeah, like, I'm with uh, DCFS and um, I just have like, a few questions for you. This is going to be a crazy story. I can already tell. Like, not what she's about to say, but, like, learning about this woman is going to be crazy. I can already tell. Like, I can tell. <laughs> Buckle up your trousers. And automatically, I was completely taken aback by it. And I was like, like, what do you mean? Did someone, like, did someone call on me? And he said yes. I was like, this is complete BS. Yes. Like, who called, like... I have an online presence and this is probably a troll and I was very upset but I was like, you know, you can come over whenever trolls. Her. Um, I'm willing to cooperate, but yeah, this is BS. I just brought my daughter home from the NICU yesterday and I'm already having to go through the process of having someone invade my home and my privacy. So I say, you know, I have nothing to hide, whatever, come over and let's get this over with. So he comes over to the apartment and Noah, Nina, and I were there. Nina was my former assistant back in Chicago. So he says, hey, I just want to preface this with like, I think this is like BS. It came across our- That's what fathering autism did too. Like a lot of these people who get DCFS called on them, which I don't think you should be doing unless you actually honestly think there's a problem. Like I remember we did Maya Knight's videos where she was like feeding, we thought she was feeding her kid, allegedly feeding them alcohol, which I still think she was doing. We got Dr. D Dozen over here talking about feeding their kids beer and champagne and stuff like that. Now it's not illegal, especially in the state of New York to give your kids alcohol, just so you guys know, but it's the immoral side of it. And especially if she's an adopted person, she's an adopted mother and all these things, and kids have FASD and the access to alcohol is crazy. Okay. But like, there's something you did or sh have shown or in a relationship with somebody that has caused somebody to do this. And it should be on that level. Now, if it is on that level, then that speaks volumes. You should be calling DCFS. If these people are making public their lives and you actually honestly think it's putting the child in danger, then you should call DCFS. But if it's not, if you just hate them for the sake of hating, DCFS is not the call to make. Okay. You should never, you should never abuse that because that's like crying wolf. Okay. So just be really careful. And obviously I don't know why someone would have called. She's probably going to say it was just trolls trolling, but I'm sure there's something there from the cursory glance at her page so far and her snark and all that stuff. It is insane how deep this goes. Yes. And basically he said that any calls made by law are like, they need to be investigated. So I'm like, all right, whatever. And he had to go through this whole spiel of asking, you know, and I like, stuff about our relationship, stuff about Ari. Um, I remember he asked me one of the questions, I don't know if this is standard, 
but he was like, oh, how did you feel when you first found out you were pregnant? I was overjoyed, but the, the type of question was just like very odd to me, I guess, is what am I... Like, it's just a very you can go see it on the internet. I have the videos. Very like, why is she upset she has to answer that question when she freely shares it with strangers on the internet? That doesn't even make sense to me. These people get so upset when somebody asks them a question about something when that they have literally shared with millions of strangers openly and doesn't doesn't care. How dare you ask me questions? Um, you sure you shared this? A question asked a woman, and I'm postpartum. I'm like. A new mom, like, I'm just like, what is going on here? And in this particular report, it said... Apparently this is like the third video about this, by the way, too. Something so ridiculous, and the DCFS person even said, yeah, I've looked at your social media, it, this seems to be like someone that follows you or something like that. It was not a mandatory reporter, but they were like, yeah, um, Alex Stacy is severely disabled, and the father Noah is a drug addict. And, uh, um, now we're getting down to it. Is Noah a drug addict? Something about uh, Noah doing drugs in the NICU and. Uh, you see the wormhole, even though she's letting it. And so the way that she said that, and again, my gut is telling me and everything in the body language is like, someone's like, um, no, I was doing drugs in like the NICU or something. I don't even know what that is. Like he wasn't, was Noah doing drugs in the queue? Um, just crazy, like crazy. We, we crossed our T's, dotted our eyes, and that was it. And basically he said, likely this is gonna be closed up. We just have to go through some paperwork and that would be that. So we're just like, all right, sounds good. She skipped over a whole bunch there. <laughs> In just like cursory glance that's, uh, hey, is this true that this happened? Uh, okay, never mind. We'll just cross the old T's and dot the old eyes. I've never navigated DCFS or having someone question if I'm able to take care of my daughter. So, uh Lots of people will question that because that is a good question. Like, I'm sorry. And a lot of people are like, Josh, you're ableist. I'm sorry. If you can't take care of a child and you're with a person like this Noah guy seems to be a loser and someone in and out and apparently other relationships that you're in and partying and drinking and all the time. Like if you're a party drinker and you have children already, you're not a good parent. Okay. Sorry. If you, if you constantly party and drink and putting your kid in the back burner and letting other people watch your children, you're a terrible parent. You, you've got Matt and Abby. You're probably not drug addicts, probably not alcoholics, probably none of those things, but they very rarely hang out with their child. They're parents takes them all the time where they go i think they're bad parents okay people exploiters are bad parents not just it's not her disability that makes her a bad parent it's her being a bad parent that makes her a bad parent the disability adds to it though it makes it even harder and so that's that's quite crazy that you have responsibility as a parent to figure out what kind of life you're going to bring your kid into can you take care of your child can you physically take care of a child and if you're like relying on the father okay fine is the father a good person then can you rely on them and it doesn't sound like you can rely on this dude. That's what I'm saying. That's why a lot of people are upset with this stuff. But it is her right, regardless of what anybody thinks, to have a child. It's not against the law to do it. Morally, I don't know. Like, I honestly think that if you can't physically take care of a child, you probably shouldn't have it. That's what I think. But again, it's her right to do what she wants to do. The, the, the law is in place for reasons. But it sounds like this guy's a huge loser. It sounds like she brings tons of losers into her house. Um, it was a lot. And... So from there, what happened, I was kind of like, wee, this is going to be over and done with, like, but then it wasn't. There was two different times that DC about to show up to my door, um, unexpectedly. I, I, this surprises me, too, because DCFS fails so many children, and but they you find them going to places where, honestly, it's it, it, like you could probably spend your time elsewhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that she doesn't deserve to have DCF's call because I don't know the whole story and she's clearly not telling the whole story. And if it has to do with drugs and stuff like that, then I guess I understand that. But like, it's really weird. The ones DCFS will, DCFS will focus on and the, what they won't. That's really crazy to me. And one time, the second time this guy came, I think it was like a week later, he knocked on my door and it was like a Friday or Saturday and it was 11 p.m. So we're in bed, like already sleeping. This guy, he was very like... I don't believe you. Abrasive and... 11 p.m.? You think someone who works for the state 
or for a, for a, for the government is going to be working at 11 p.m. Okay. He said, "Oh, we there's like there was an emergency call made. Uh, apparently, someone said that we had dropped Ari because in one of my videos, she has her little red strawberry on the back of her head, which is essentially a birthmark. It's a hemangioma." So she was born with it. She has a few of them and they grow away with age. And we're like, at this point, I'm like pissed because I'm like, all right, I thought this is over and now. Here's the thing. Yes. You should. If you put your life on the internet, though, if you exploit children and everything else and people are watching you and hate watching you and you have a lot of enemies, they're going to look for things. They're going to be looking for signs that, of, of abuse because apparently that's what people really think is going on. And so I don't really blame someone for seeing a big mark like that and being, okay, that looks like the kid hit its head. I need to call CPS. This is really scary because here it is. If you don't want the, the smoke, if you don't want all this stuff, don't put it on the internet. That's the thing. You, these parents who all complain about DCFS calls and everything else, but considered and people think that they're abusive parents, you put this all on the internet. People are just disseminating it. That's if you don't want it out there, don't put it out there. Someone here is coming to my house from someone on the internet saying that we dropped her on her head because she has a birthmark on the back of her head. It's ridiculous. Because after the first visit, I contacted a lawyer just to make sure everything was going to be okay. I was very scared. Basically, my lawyer was like, you know, they don't have to answer anything. Like, they should be going through a lawyer first, this and that. So, anyways. He basically left, and that was that, but... Didn't finish the... What? So would you say you're not going to answer questions because your lawyer said not to answer questions? Is that what you meant to say there? Me and Noah were... The way that she's just cursory glancing over this whole thing is crazy to me. Like, she's leaving stuff out. We're extremely shaken up by all of this happening. At this point, things are getting more serious because there were more than one report but I was told it was very scary that I could lose custody of my daughter, that she could be taken away, that um, all this stuff and that, you know, being affiliated with Noah could be bad and I'm- Why does she keep just glossing over that Noah thing? If it is, then get rid of him. This guy's going to cause you to lose your daughter because he's a loser, a drug dealer, drug addict, whatever. Then why is he in the life? Like people obviously have a problem with Noah. Just like freaking out because I'm like, this is so unfair. I'm a disabled mom. My daughter is more than well taken care of. And the fact that my life is basically being put in shambles because of this is just atrocious. Or, you know, hear me out. Don't put it on the internet! You didn't have to share the, your daughter with the world. You didn't have to do it. All these creators out here, you don't have to do it. There's literally, you don't have to, okay? No reason to. You make money making porn. You make money on Instagram and on YouTube and all these places and on TikTok. You don't need to show your child. You just didn't have to do it. I really don't think that. And they'll like, in spite of all that, they'll do it. They're like, now I'm going to show my kid more because hey, F the haters. Would have ever happened if I was not disabled and- That's not true. It, it, was it sounds like people were worried about this Noah situation, not because you were disabled. Awful. It, but she'll use that, right? That's her victim. She's like, that's her victim badge. She's like, okay, this never would have happened. It was undisabled. No, it would never happen if you didn't exploit your child and you weren't an asshole. Okay? You don't even have to put the disability and, and focus on it at all, at all in her life. Lots of disabled people have children, can do it well, are good at it, can find the care and support that they need, right? She's going to use that, though, because that's what all she has. Oh, you wouldn't, you guys, she thinks she's untouchable because she's disabled, but it's the other stuff. That we, we can focus on. We don't need to even look anywhere near that because it has nothing to do with this. Nothing. Like, and that sucks because she's allowed to say that. And it's totally not true. It's completely awful. So I was paying her all this money and nothing really, like, I don't know. I felt like she wasn't doing all that much. But I'm stuck by a lawyer. That's another story. I'm scared paying her, like, basically in fear of already getting taken away from me. So every day I was like living in fear, like, are they gonna come to the and take her? Went from basically me thinking that this is gonna be fine to holy shit, this is serious. 
then you're glad you're glossing over too much then because it just sounds like they came and the guy thought it was bs that he was there and he just like here i have to close the file next person came and if it's just a strawberry in the back of the head just be like that you're taking comments from my haters this is a birth birth mark look for yourself bye but then the lawyer's like don't say anything so they're gonna be oh if, if the person came to the door she's like i don't say anything to you i have a lawyer blah blah, blah. then that's not gonna help you right she's glossing over too much because in the end, if, if your kid's taken care of and you can prove that it's, they didn't drop her on her head and everything else, then what do you have to worry about? She's missing some big, big points here. A few weeks later, someone else came on an emergent call. It was that Noah and I had gotten into an argument about co-sleeping with Ari and that I like ran into him with my wheelchair which never happened. I mean, if that's all you have to defend yourself, I can use it. it ne- Put little blades on the wheels. Never happened. And for someone to say that, they would have had to have been in my apartment to even make it a whole while like that. Like, okay, this is totally bullshit. So I cooperated with the... I don't think it's BS. I think that the, she probably does have toxic relationships. It sounds like she attracts toxic men, um, obviously, and probably does argue and fight a lot. Like a lot of people do. A lot of people fight and argue. Okay. But it sounds like, you know, you show some things that get people a little bit concerned. So what are those things? This woman from DFS and she was pretty chill. And we told her like, yeah, like this is under like consolidation, this case with our lawyer and like this has happened multiple times yeah you can come look at Ari and she's like all right left some time went on and every day it was this big what if what if what if we need to make an emergency care plan and you're approved to DCFS all these different things and I at that point, when if DCF has to come three times and they have found nothing, there should be a mark on your file that says this person is an influencer. They're going to get calls all the time. Just ignore them, right? DCFS, I don't know if they have to, to respond to calls because if that's the case, I mean, I know so many creators that people have called DCFS on and they have never said words, right, at all. Um, at, at that point, though... Like, I have a file on my system, especially with the OPP and stuff like that. Like, it's like, if anything happens, if I get swatted or whatever, there's a huge number, there's a huge, like, note on my file that says this is a YouTuber. You know, call first, here's the number, blah, blah, blah. Like, at that point, you could be like, look, put me on this list that you guys keep coming, and it's clearly not. So, what I think she's not saying is that there were concerns, and that if they keep coming, there clearly was concerns. These DCFS agents have notes in her file that have not cleared her so there's something there's something she's not telling us i'm like my mind is just like what do i do i'm just gonna do whatever i have to do to make sure that i can keep my daughter so eventually we got letters in the mail that our case was um dismissed i forget what they call it the case was dropped and we were deemed like fit to be parents and this, the whole time I kept telling my friends and family and lawyer, like, there's no way that Ari's going to get taken away. There's no way. She- Hold on, I gotta read that. And... You were previously notified the Department of Child Services investigated report of suspected child abuse, neglect, and fulfillment duties. After a thorough evaluation, DCFS determined the report to be unfounded. This means that no credible evidence of child abuse and neglect was found. DCFS will maintain a copy of this investigation report, confidential under state law, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This, the whole time, I kept telling my friends and family and lawyer, like, there's no way that Ari's going to get taken away. There's no way she's taken care of. Anyone that comes in this house is going to see that and see that we have a system that works for us as a family. And Ari is always our number one priority. I can tell you this without even looking further into her content. Your daughter's needs are not your number one priority. Your needs are your number one priority. I can already tell it. I can tell. I can just, it's the vibes that you give off. And the things that you do, again, it's this victim mentality. It's me, I, I, I have this victimhood status and I'm going to use this status to get whatever I want and use it for clout and to build my platform and everything else. You can tell 100% that her child does not come first. 
And everyone was like, well, Alex, what if, what if, what if? And I got scared in essence, spending, I think, over 15 grand on um, different legal consultation type things. 15 grand on consultations? Really? What? That definitely I was not in the position to be spending, but because I was so in fear of losing my daughter as a single parent, I... Nah, you don't get to sit there and cry and be like, because here's the solution. You ready for the solution? Bring it on in here, Alex. Bring it on here. Come on. Bring it in here. Stop showing your child. Stop showing your disgusting life. You don't want people seeing it? Stop showing it. Stop exploiting this child. That's your answer. No one's going to say a word if you take your child off the internet. They're going to uh, applaud you. Take your kid off the internet. But it never occurs to these people to be like, well, here's a way I can stop all of it. I can literally just take it off the internet. But they won't. They refuse. I spent it and I would do it again. And it's unfair. But I love my daughter more than anything in this world. No, you love this life that you created and you, nobody can, you can, I hate when creators say, I love my daughter more than anything in the world. And then in the next video, exploit them. You do not, you cannot say the word. I love my daughter more than anything in the world. When you put money and everything else over their safety and their privacy and their consent, you can't say it. You're not allowed to do spa. Okay. Nope. And I am just very, very happy that the case was closed and I think what happened is so extremely unfair and I know that I'm not the first disabled parent that this has happened. See, it's not, it's nothing to do with your disability. She keeps pointing it to the disability. That's not why people, they're not coming to your show saying, hey, we're here because you have a disability and you have a child. We're here to investigate. No, they're investigating child abuse. So you can't, like, again, she's, she's redirecting it to the victimhood status, which you can't do because it's not why they're there. Because then you could sue them for that, by the way. That is ableism. You cannot just sit there and be like, it's because I'm just able. That's not why people hate you. It has nothing to do with it. You're just a shitty person, apparently. And just because I can't physically hold my daughter or pick her up does not mean that I'm not able to facilitate her. She said, because I can't pick my daughter or hold her. I can't facilitate her care. I can't facilitate her care. Well, I mean, at some level, it probably does mean that, especially if you have toxic relationships inside the house. If a person's coming in, they're drugs and they're on drugs and they drink a lot and they get, they're incapable of helping you. What happens if there's an emergency? That's what people are probably worried and scared about. What happens if, because of the people that you surround yourself with are toxic assholes who aren't going to help you if shit hits the fan, then your child is the one who's going to suffer for that. Not being able to hold or your child or do anything for them is actually, yes, that's a scary thing. I'm sorry. That is a legitimate fear for a lot of people. And I think if you were a normal person that had normal relationships, nobody would care. But you're not. That's the problem. Okay. You're toxic and the people you surround yourself with are toxic. I don't. And her parent and her mother and her daughter. To have someone question your ability. Okay, it's, it's so, don't be so stupid. So she did that one and then there's another one that happened. <laughs> All right, guys, so my vlog camera is not working right now, and I'm just, like, going to record on my iPhone, so sorry if your quality sucks to add. iPhone quality is as good or better than a lot of DSLRs now, so I don't know. I don't get this. I haven't posted a video in a minute. Um, I've had a lot of... Don't say things like a minute. Don't do that. Okay. You're growing up. Going on, and... Oh, just a lot that I have to update you guys on. I sprained my ankle. Yes, I know I'm disabled. How the hell do you sprain an ankle? I was asking the same question. What? How? Um, you just, it, fall out of your chair, I guess? It happens. Honestly, a wheelchair injuries happen. Like, I mean, your foot hanging over and you, like, hit a wall or something? I could see that. More frequently, I mean... I, like, it bends your ankle? I could see that. Any other disabled people watching this, you could comment down below. Like, 
you know, I have a lot of friends that, you know, fall out of their wheelchairs, you're not wearing a seatbelt, they're like, you know, di just different freak accidents that happen when you're a wheelchair user. You have to be so careful because one little tap of this joystick, and um, it holds it a lot of power. My armrest was kind of broken, and so it was like kind of hanging down there. Arm like kind of slipped off the armrest, pushed my joystick forward, and I rammed into the shelving unit in the garage and my ankle is still hurting I think it's been like over that doesn't look like just your ankle holy shit for a week now uh, but it's a lot better that's not how you spell ouch yeah, I showed off to the house again from another TikTok troll not trolls people if they honestly have <laughs> Okay, maybe they are, but honestly, I don't think anybody's really calling DCF for someone because you just hate them. These people, I think people honestly believe that you have your kid in a terrible situation that's dangerous. That's what I honestly believe. I don't want to believe there are people out there just like willy-nilly calling DCFS for no reason. Um, and this time it was for medical neglect because of Ari's eye in videos that I've been posting. Like you can see that she has a little bit of like a red irritation. Again, I'm going to say it to you here, Wheelchair Rapunzel. If you don't want people commenting on anything about your child, stop posting your child, you moron. Around the eye, and in the report, it was false because all these people are making it because they have a vendetta against us too. It's the, sad that she does The report is fake because she does have a pediatrician, so a false assumption was made. That's not why they're doing it. They're doing it because they actually have concern for your child. Like they can never just say that they can never be like, you know what? Maybe you guys are concerned, but let me clarify some of those concerns for you here, which you shouldn't have to do anyway, but you have to do it because you exploit your children online and people are investing in your children, okay? So if you can't just dismiss people like this, oh, hey, Charles, well, are, do they have reason to believe that you have toxic ass disgusting people around this baby? And if so, why are they wrong? Really sad fucking human beings. But you know what? And this just, again, if you always talk about your haters, that's just gonna enable them to do it more. They're looking for your response for this so that you can re they can clap back and be like, why is she just clapping back? Like, why would she say things? We took her to this, like, child protection, um, like, appointment. Basically, they just asked a bunch of questions, examined her, in the report insinuating she had a black guy. And people were leaving comments on my videos like, oh my god, Ari has a black guy. And she clearly doesn't have a black guy, like... Yeah, that's... I would be concerned, too. Sorry. I don't care if your child rarely has a black guy, doesn't have a black guy, rarely has a black guy, it doesn't matter. Stop showing your child. It's none of anybody's business. And it's just getting yourself in the problems and more drama, but she can't stop. That's the thing. People are investing in this woman's child. She makes money off of her child. That's where I have this big problem here. That's a big problem for me. Nothing that I've ever... In this video, what black guy? Well, this one, probably. The one that we're looking at? Posted of her looks like she has a black guy and everything came back like normal obviously um but it's like honestly just so sad that our family has to go through this and again it let me say it out loud don't show your kid anymore problem solved but she probably believes oh no then that's my haters will win and, eh. that this is happening because of internet like, it, it's ridiculous. Mm. Just because just of trolls, not because of who you are. We're trying to figure out, you know, who is doing this because it is against the law. And you said government, like... It's not against the law. If someone has a legitimate concern and they think that you keep seeing your kid with a black eye and they thought you dropped them on the head and everything else, because there's videos of her with the child in her lap and apparently she can't... It's just not safe yet for this child at this age to be in her lap and so people are concerned that's not illegal if you have a true concern about a child on the internet it's not illegal to call tcfs she wants you to think it is it is not 
It is never going to be illegal if you have a concern to call in the concern, okay? It might waste their time, which sucks, yeah, but it's not illegal. State agency to, you know, harass a family, essentially, and... Again, none of this happens if you just stop showing your kid! With the amount of, like, DCFS visits, like, this is harassment at this point, and the fact that, you know, our, our privacy is being violated. Uh... Hmm. Mm-hmm. The privacy that you give everybody on the internet for free, your privacy is being violated. You put it on the internet. Are you, uh, these people are so dunce. Just daft. They are. Our internet privacy, you're, you put it on there. You're the one willingly putting it out there. There's a multitude of different things. And how much I went through during my pregnancy to make sure that she came to fruition perfectly and safely and now for people on the internet to be going out and saying that we're neglecting her we're abusing her is just the most hurtful thing a mom can experience okay stop putting it on the internet then obviously all of our all this is solved family members are hurt by this too but we're trying to kind of get to the bottom of it but again it's hard because the calls and the reports are anonymous so yep sorry i'm like going like this is the freaking sun is in my eyes and i have like very sensitive eyes hmm so maybe you should go in the sun then if you have sensitive eyes it's a good idea you know i have sensitive eyes so let me stand directly in the sun i we don't know. The reports are all anonymous because this person obviously... It's not one person. I'm telling you that. It's a bunch of people. He's doing it not in good faith. And it even says, like, when you call the hotline, like, false reporting or not submitting a report in good faith is a third-degree felony. So, um... One of doing drugs is a third-degree felony. It's I, not. I don't know. Right now, we really don't know who's doing it. It's hard to find out because of them submitting these calls and reports anonymously. I don't know where we go from here. We're kind of just like in this limbo, like, is this going to keep happening? Because, you know, even the DCFS investigators that have been here are aware that I'm an influencer. I'm on the internet. and these I'm an influencer. No, you're not. I don't know where these calls are coming from, but regardless of that, they have How do all these other influencers make it in the world who don't exploit their children and not and get away with it? And how, how do they do it? Right? It's not the reason people are calling. I'm surprised you didn't say it's because I'm in a wheelchair. They come out. They're getting frustrated, you can tell, because they're like, you know, they know it's BS. It's a what is Excelsior? What does that mean? Basically, they're coming to resources for a family that actually needs these services and our daughter is taken care of by is this gonna be the same bullshit over and over again comments that someone said that i said i mean i i commented this analogy on one of my um comments that someone said that i said that's what telling a bully kid don't go to school because oh. you're all the time she has so much she has a village. She definitely has a village. And well, she needs a village, and that's important. But if the village is full of drug addicts and alcoholics, it's not a very good village. There's nothing wrong with being a single parent, but this isn't even that. This is like she has a whole village right here every day. Um, and it's the SMA swallow. It's just very yeah, I don't know what that means. And I'm kind of just like... Where do I go from here? And a lot of people online are like, well, the answer is to stop posting her. <laughs> yeah! And I'm like, no, that's not the answer to me. Oh, that's not the answer, is it? Okay. I mean, I, I commented this analogy on one of my um, comments that someone said that. I said, that's like telling a bully kid don't go to school because you're an aunt bullied and it's no that's nothing like that at all the analogy does not stick that's not gonna hunt that dog is not gonna hunt it's not don't go to school you might get bullied no it's i will take care of the bully we'll figure this out and we will you know contact the proper authorities we'll make this work 
okay? It's not. Your kid has no choice. Your kid's not being bullied, okay, either. That's so silly. So you're going to put your kid on the, on the internet in front of millions of people, and you're going to do porn as well on the side, and you're going to, like, exploit this child. And you'll be like, no, it's like telling someone not to be bullied. You know, you're opening your child up to being bullied. You're the reason in this analogy that your kid would be bullied. And it's not even the kid being bullied, but that's the analogy. If you're the reason your kid's being bullied, you change. Do you understand that? You make the change. She's taking herself out of this equation like she has nothing to do with it. That's bullshit. Your fault. No. What? Not. It's the bully's fault. And the bullies need to be held accountable. It's my right as her mother to... Exploit her? Make content with her. Ah, it's my right as a mother to make content with her. There you go. That's all she cares about. She could stop this instantly, but it's my right as a mother. So if there is actually a danger of her child being taken away and she said she was scared about that, then your solution is simple, but she doesn't use the solution, which means to tell you she doesn't really care. She's really not that scared because if she was, she would stop. Any good parent would. If there's a, there's a chance something could happen to your child, you would take that chance to not you would, you would take all measures to stop that thing from happening. And she just got done telling you how scared she was that this was going to happen. But then it wouldn't stop the thing that gets the calls made on her. Again, it's not the analogy was so stupid and it's making me angry that she thinks people are that stupid. You are the reason. So if the analogy is you're the reason your kid is getting in trouble or being bullied or whatever the case may be, then you stop whatever behavior is that you're doing that gets that done. That's not excusing the bullying behavior because bullies shouldn't exist. And I understand that. But we have to live in reality where these things do exist. And so whatever you can do to mitigate and stop that, you should do that. But if the reason it's happening is because of you, then what do you do, right? The reason your child's getting bullied because they don't have the, the freshest clothes or this and that and the other thing. And there's like a bunch of weird reasons kids do stupid things. Okay. There are mitigating circumstances that you can do to stop all that stuff. First of all, you can actively take a part in your child's life go to the school and get it fixed which is what i would do okay but if you're the reason and you don't want to make any changes like these children who are getting bullied because their parents have only fans and they're like no this is how we afford our life you want this there's a girl out there who's doing it who was an actor and is now telling her son like you like that shirt that you have you like that coat you have you like all the things that you know the computer i buy you well if you like all that stuff then don't worry about me doing porn Right? There are people actively doing this, but if your child is going to be actively bullied and hurt because that is the reality of this existence, then why would you not stop it? Why would you continue it? That's selfish. You understand that? Oh, her analogy pissed me off. Just like all the other millions of influencer moms. Yeah, all of which are wrong too. All of which. Was that supposed to be your defense? Well, other people do it. Okay, well, they're wrong too. Butthole? Like, I'm just some sort of resolution. Or maybe DCFS will just keep showing up at the door. I don't know. Maybe I'll, like, start baking some cookies to give them. And oh, like, yeah, I'm sure you're good. No thanks. No thanks. I don't know. I don't know, guys. It's ridiculous. When the yeah, baking cookies should help. DCFS person came. It was on Saturday. And at that point, my wheelchair was broken. And I was going through it. I had a broken ankle, a broken wheelchair. And then I was on the phone for like two hours Saturday morning trying to figure out how to like get some emergency wheelchair repair person out of here. And I, I couldn't like get anyone. And then my wheelchair at Richard wasn't available until one day, so... I mean, if you're looking for reasons why you can't properly parent a child, there's one. You can't get emergency repair for your wheelchair. So you not only can't pick up your child or help them, you can't even have someone that lives with you that can help you for repair a wheelchair. So you are not mobile at all. What if something happens? You know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder if she has a 24-hour caregiver. I don't know. Again, I can... You guys will probably tell me but like again you're t you're telling me this kid's never in danger but that's your what you're showing me with the way that your life is that's not true at all it seems real scary actually you know i'm i'm on my laptop looking up all these wheelchair bears they're telling me they're either closed or they don't 
have the resources to know how to repair a permobile wheelchair, which is what I had. It's like, what? What do I do? Like, I'm so screwed. Then we get. So imagine saying this, admitting something. You're so screwed, but you also have to take care of a child. That's concerning, right? The knock at the door. As I'm doing this, and it's, it's DCF us. And they're like, we just closed out your case. Another caller came in. It's about their eyes. It's about uh, you getting drunk on TikTok. Ah, there's one that you missed. You getting drunk on TikTok. Why are you getting drunk on TikTok? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to prove here? Why are you doing it then? But mainly, it was mainly about the eye. Yeah, no, it's probably about the drinking. How do you, you can't even physically parent your child. Okay, and you've admitted, that's admittedly so. Okay, so why, how are you going out partying and stuff like that? Like, what? You wonder why people are upset? So I love how she says that just in passing near the end of the video. How it's like, oh, well, I was also getting drunk on the internet. So that might have been something. Pr probably that. Probably not even the black guy. Probably just the drunk thing. And she looked at the eye. We were all just like, this is ridiculous. Who is we all? So she's like, she clearly doesn't have a black guy. I'm like, yeah. And it ended up being what we all kind of assumed is that she might have some eczema around the eye. It's just a waste of their time, a waste of our time. Um, and I just hope it ends soon, but Obviously, I hope if we don't find out who is stupid. Okay, she's gonna keep saying, oh, it's somebody else said it. 80 degrees and it's December. And that is what's going on. We'll see. Okay, thanks for that. That's what's going on. Anyway, again, there's a, there's a massive, massive wormhole when it comes to this creator. There's a lot and it's like almost too much. And I say that like I'm saying that. It's almost too much. But what I'd like to do is create a timeline of events about how she's coming to the scene and all the major events have led up to like people getting upset with the way she parents and the DCFS being called and all those things. Because she's not telling us the whole truth, right? Clearly not. And then when she alludes to it later at the end of the video, oh yeah, I was also getting drunk on the internet. Well, that's... Yeah, I definitely want to know more about this situation and I'm going to do a little bit more of a deep dive for sure. Absolutely. Wheelchair Rapunzel, you're gross. You are a nasty person and shame on you for blaming everybody but yourself for your for what you're doing, okay? Because you're that type of person and people are obviously concerned about your child, but you're clearly not, which speaks volumes. And let's be, let's be real. Use whatever bathroom you want. If you're walking into a bathroom again with a person that's obviously disabled, then you give them the choice, okay? But if it's free, you go ahead and use that bathroom. Also, take a deep breath. Not if you're in a bathroom, though. Okay, just, you know what I'm saying? But thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this. Guys, if you have information on her, I'm absolutely, my inbox is open. Let's take a look. Let's take a deep dive into this stuff. Make sure you head over to my wheelchair underscore Rapunzel underscore Reddit page, which is linked below, and we'll start talking there. Um, you can post videos and pictures on my Reddit thread if you want to. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being amazing and valuable and credible. Protect your children, okay? And if you have to, you gotta protect children around you. That's what we do. I will see you when I see you.